Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. MBG here once again with a little daily update, part rant, part, I guess, uh, news and rumors update for you guys on a Thursday. Uh, a lot of stuff's been happening. If you're in the Northeast, uh, we got some snow this week. It was kind of kind of interesting. You know, a lot of a lot of people are out of school. Hopefully, everybody was safe and warm. Uh, for the most part, so and doing some hobbying, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I got a little bit more done than, than usual, so that was definitely nice. I had to dig out my thermal underwear. Uh, they make me feel powerful when I wear them. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. I'm, I'm glad I still had them because they came in handy uh, for sure. So uh, we got a little bit of a tabletop market watch going on right now. It's a little uh, segment I'm going to start calling to just kind of give you guys an update on what's going on with the industry. Uh, you know, as a whole, or just a couple things here and there. Fantasy Flight announced that because of the stuff going on in uh, the Longshore strike, that some of their products are going to start to be affected. So now we have two different companies coming out and saying that that might be a thing. It looks like some of their board games, some of their RPG modules, and uh, re expected restock of some of the X-Wing ships for next week may be delayed. However, the new Wave 6 X-Wing ships apparently are already in the warehouse and unaffected, which is nice. Um, hopefully this strike doesn't go on too much longer because a lot of our gaming stuff comes from China. A lot of the pigments for the paints and you know the, the dyes and things like that come from China. You know, a lot of the stuff for Gen Con comes from China. So this is gonna be really interesting to see how this trickles down into you know our whole genre, our our whole hobby as as a whole, not to mention the rest of the world, you know, or the rest of the, the, the people that have different hobbies that they might have as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting. I hope, hopefully it gets resolved and everybody, you know, gets their, what they're looking for and uh, can, you know, uh, move on to a uh, kind of a, a better arrangement, hopefully, and here in the near future. Games Workshop has said that the Harlequin Codex might be delayed uh, to March 7th in an email. So hopefully we see that coming out. However, it's unclear whether the digital versions are still gonna be released this weekend, because I guess a release is a release, but we'll, we, we'll see how, how that goes, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, if you haven't already, I don't know if you noticed, but we just put out a fresh new trailer. Uh, Kenny from Next Little Painting and myself, we're working on a new YouTube channel uh, with a lot of exclusive content, including battle reports. That's gonna be like the main focus, the exclusive part of that channel. If you haven't already done so, definitely click the link and you know go drop a subscribe over there. We definitely need your help. Uh, you know we got a lot of stuff planned, but we have to get to a certain level to you know do a bunch of other things and unlock YouTube settings and level up and, and all that. But we definitely need your help. Please do that. Uh, there, that is uh, that's we super need that. So check out the trailer. It's pretty fresh. I was impressed with it. I was like, wow, that blew my mind. I, I wow. wow. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about that, but that was, that was some good stuff there. So hopefully we'll see a lot more of that in the future. I know uh, me and Kenny have been working very hard on some of these uh, videos as well as, uh, you know, doing some voice. We got a lot of stuff to do this weekend, some voiceovers and things. So it's definitely keeping us busy on top of normal commissions, on top of doing this, on top of blogging. For me, at least, it's like, hey, what hat, what hat am I wearing right now? But it's great. You know, I love contributing to the hobby and hopefully you guys find some ins inspiration from it. Speaking of which, uh, we got a couple more supporters on the Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Evan from Facing the Grey Tide uh, came through with some support. Uh, <laughs> that was really awesome, by the way. Uh, if you haven't already done so, go over to Facing the Grey Tide. It's a great blog. They do a lot of good stuff for the community. Evan Chandler, some of the guys, we're actually going to see them next weekend at the Forge Narrative Seasonal down in Durham, North Carolina. So. Uh, it's going to be good times, a lot of uh, competitive 40K. And this weekend, too, is actually LBO, you know, Reese and his crew uh, going out to Las Vegas and throwing on what I'm sure is going to be a great event as well. So a lot of stuff going on. It's starting to gear up for another great 40K tournament season, and we always love to see that sort of thing here. So please, if you haven't already, go over to The Long War, uh, subscribe to that. Check out the Forge Narrative Seasonal. It's not too late to purchase your tickets. Uh, if you're reading this video right now, or if you're watching this video rather, uh, it's probably a little too late to go to the Las Vegas Open, but definitely you want to check online for some of that coverage, because I'm sure there's some crazy stuff going on there. Uh, as always, it means some Vegas, right? So <laughs> it's got to be crazy stuff going on. <laughs> um, so I kind of wanted to show you guys a couple of things. I got some uh, airbrushing prep tips and things like that that we've talked about in the past, but I haven't really showed you, so I wanted to show you that 
want to maybe show you a preview of some of the conversions I was working on for a commission. But what I really wanted to focus on, and kind of a mini rant, uh, it takes a lot for me to get fired up, I feel like, these days, but I put out what I thought was a really good tutorial yesterday on painting a fender using wolf with the airbrush. And it wasn't painting a whole wolf, it was painting just the fur, right? Because, you know, you can blend uh, the fur it's so quick with the airbrush, you can knock out like a whole scar. I had to paint 15 of these things up. I got I got the base coat on the fur, laid out in like three hours on 15 full wolves, right? So I thought that was really good. And then I'm, you know, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna dry, do some dry brushing, hit up some details, do the tongues, do the eyeballs, teeth, you know, all, all the nine yards. Because that, to me, that's the allure of airbrushing. I got so busy with all the stuff I had going on in the past. Well, not that I'm any less busy right now, but I got so busy with all the stuff I had going on that that's why I started, I picked up airbrushing because, well, let's face it, I feel like we all want to airbrush. And it's, it's one of those things that everybody feels like they can do it, but they don't understand the amount of practice that you really have to put into it. I'm still learning myself. I, I, I feel like I'm a novice when it comes to airbrushing, but I, I feel like that you know, in, in some regards that I'm, I'm really good at it, but in some things I'm still unsure of myself. And that, you know, that just takes time and that takes practice with anything. But the point I'm trying to make is, guys, that airbrushing is is for blending. It's for, it's for going in there, doing your work, knocking out the blends, knocking out the base coats, knocking out the shades. You know, you wanna, you, you wanna save your time there. So any pre-stuff you can do, like if you watch the Fenerizian Wolf, uh, fur video that I did. I appreciated just the base coat with a, I think it was a Phoenician yellow spray from Model Masters because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. I didn't want to have to sit there with the airbrush and hose down the wolf over and over with a yellow because it would take so long to build up because that, that's a, a lighter color over a darker gray would just take a while to build up. I just want to hit it and I want that tone to be exactly where I want it to start pulling it up and then pull it back to the bone colors and things like that. So don't be afraid to use pre-shades. Go down to your tester or go down to your hobby town or whatever. Find a tester spray that will make a nice base color and use that. You know, or go over to your hobby store, pick up some army painter sprays, start there. Like if you're doing red, maybe start with a red. It, you know, it just kind of depends on when to, you know, check out some tutorials. That's why, you know, that's why I put up tutorials. That's why Kenny puts up tutorials. That's why, you know, tons of other people out there have all these tutorials and not just, not just in our, in our genre, not just in tabletop or gaming, but there's, there's scale miniature guys. There's stuff people do with infinity models that would just blow your mind when I, I, I just, I don't even understand how people get the detail that, that crazy with the airbrush, but I know it works for me. And I like to save the time on the front end. So once I get those shades and once I get those fades and those blends and those base coats built up and the, uh, all the, the low lights and the shading, that now I can go back, now I can have time to do freehand. Now I can have time to pick out all those lights and computer details and, and all, you know, hit up the chevrons and, you know, go in with, uh, do a whole bunch of weathering, you know, and just spend the extra time, go the extra mile. You got to bring that hobby back on these on these airbrush you know projects. I feel like because you you know you see remember <laughs> there was a magical time when I would see stuff that was dry brush and I was like oh my gosh that looks so good but now I look back at it and I'm like wow that was just really super simple you just dry brush it but to me it looked amazing but now it's it you know it's kind of the same thing you see people with these airbrush with stuff they airbrushed and and it looks great it look it is a solid solid job. But that's kind of where they stop and they fail to keep bringing that hobby back into their models and go in there with an actual brush. You still have to pick up that brush, guys. Don't be afraid. You know how to line brush. You know how to do all these details. Get back, pick those brushes back up. Go back in there on those models. Hit up those lights. Hit up those eyes. Hit up those teeth, those claws, those fangs. You know, all that detail, all those power swords, all that stuff. You know, I just did a, a really cool tutorial I felt like on lightning effects, on, you know, power sword blades and huge, you know, all, all sorts of different things. I got a commission coming up with some uh, void shield generators with those huge, like, um, you know, Tesla balls at the top of this thing. And man, I just, my mind was exploding. I was like, man, I'm going to have like lightning jumping all over this thing. You know, it's going to be great. I'm really going to get into that project. I'm, I can't wait to, to get this thing, get my hands on it. I'm so excited about this project. But that's, 
that's the thing. That's where that's where you want to shine. You don't want to just like hit it with these these fades and then just just put it on the tabletop because what that does is it gives airbrushing a bad name, guys. It really does because airbrushing to some people is cheating. Let's face it, it's it's cheating. Like people are like, oh, well, you just airbrushed it. Well, yeah, I, I airbrushed it, but you know, it's. A, you know how hard it is to get good with an airbrush? Like, yes, yes, I just airbrushed that, but then I went back and I spent the eight hours that I saved detailing it back out. I still spent the same amount of time, but I but I detailed it out, so it's cool, right? I mean, I feel like it's cool, but you know, if you don't go in there and you don't spend that extra time and you don't bring that hobby back and you just kind of throw it on the tabletop with you know, just a bunch of fades and just a bunch of randomness and splotches of paint, you know, well, it looks good and it looks it's a great solid beginning point for you to go back and finish those models up I feel like now granted I know sometimes we don't all have the time we would like myself definitely included but don't sell yourself short because if we you know you keep seeing this kind of same level stuff on the tabletop it's just gonna keep giving airbrushing even worse and worse name and what we want to do is we want to bring that hobby back we want to show you guys new and innovative ways to spend that time to you know that, that you're saving to make yourself look better and to help advance the hobby because I mean let's let's face it 10 years from now we might all be playing with holograms anyways and this is all a moot point but it's all about bringing the hobby back it's all about presenting your stuff it's all about not showing up at a tournament with gray plastic models <laughs> just a little reference for facing the gray top there but anyways, so I digress. I, I wanted to go on a little rant there real quick. Let me wrap it up. I just want to say that, you know, picking, choosing to pick up an airbrush and learn and trying to learn an airbrush is a big step. So I don't want to knock anybody that's done that, but please guys, make sure that once you get in there and you do all that airbrush work, do your best to remember to pick up that brush too and get in there and hit those details and spend that extra time and go that extra mile. And you will really be surprised how much better your stuff looks when you have the combination of airbrush and all that detail work as well. So make sure that you're doing, you're putting your best foot forward for the hobby guys. And that's that's all I ask. I think that's all that any any of us can ask. So you don't. So we stop hearing this. Oh, but you just airbrushed it. Nobody wants that, right? <laughs> Am I alone? Can I get an amen? <laughs> I feel like guys, somebody should be amening me right now. Anyways. Uh, so that that is all I have to say about that guys. Let me show you real quick um, some prepping tips for actually you know setting up things so you can assemble them on the fly you can airbrush them and assemble them on the fly and uh, then we'll also come right back here and close it up. Okay so the very easiest thing you can do to up your airbrushing game is go over to your Lowe's or your Home Depot and get some of these sweet uh, latex paint stirrers. They make them in two different sizes. You got the the big one there in the front and the super small normal size gallon one in the back there. Now I just found out that the super big one in the front will not fit in my new super swanky airbrush uh, uh, vent thing so I had to, had to reconfigure that a little bit. But all you have to do is just get you some double stick tape, some 3M double stick tape, put it down across, leave enough space in between the parts so that you know you can get in there and do your fades without the oversplash uh, back onto you know like for instance shoulder pad to shoulder pad and things like that. Um, same with the heads. Heads are a little bit more difficult to do. What I like to do is I will put like a dab of glue down on the actual um, double stick tape, and then I'll put the the heads on it. Kind of you kind of push it down so it still adheres. But then what happens is as I twist this, you'll see it right there. There's just a little dab of glue just holding it on, so these things just don't like pop off. So you know as you're priming or whatever. For unusual shapes, what you might want to do is take some thumbtacks and you're still going to use some of that double stick tape. But what I do is, is I take the double stick tape to the part and then I glue the double stick tape to the thumb, the thumbtack. Now keep in mind, these thumbtacks, you're going to have to drive them through the little stirrer rod and they're going to stick out the other side. So don't stab yourself in, in the hand. So you're going to want to clip those down. Uh, make sure you also don't, you know, the ricochets don't hit you in the eyeball or anything like that. It works great for some of the stuff like that you have to get up, back up underneath, like backpacks and things like that. You, here you can see too where the double stick tape is just on the actual part, and then I glue the double stick tape to the thumbtack. 
and it works great for, like I said, all sorts of different parts, all shapes and sizes for anything you got to get up underneath, and it won't work if you uh, tape it down to the stirs. Now, since you all hung in there for this big long rant, I've got a little treat for you. This was a little conversion project that I was working on for commission, some Admex stuff. I went a little crazy with it. I, I made some uh, some crazy cyber Oculus guys right there out of the Karen Rates. I used uh, Green Stuff Industries little tentacle maker to make all sorts of uh, tentacles and I kind of glued them up into the cape. Then for some of the uh, Castle X guys right there, um, just used uh, crazy amounts of power fists and just kind of got in there and did some crazy stuff. Did some uh, some power feeds for the top plasma rifles, which I think they're uh, bulk heights. So it was a fun little project and I, I really enjoyed it. All right, so hopefully those were some really good tips for you guys that you can help, you know, you can take uh, to your tabletop and your workbench and be able to just kind of go in and, you know, when you put a model together, keep in mind that, hey, I want this, this color, and hey, I want this, this color. And yes, yeah, sometimes you're not gonna be able to separate those things out, like with some of the AdMech stuff that I'm doing because there's no, you know, there's no way to break it all apart. You just gotta, you're just gonna have to go in there, do your airbrush fades and actually grab that brush and get in there, you know, with a metal like I'm gonna have to do. And that's just that's just the facts of life sometimes. It just doesn't work out. But when you can, try to sectionalize your parts as much as possible so you can get in there and you can do that extra work and then assemble them as best you can with glue over painted models. That's a challenge, but we gotta put our big boy pants on. We gotta keep moving the hobby forward, guys. So um, that's about it for this one. Please, if you haven't already, go over to the long war. Definitely drop us a subscribe there. Uh, we super, super need your help with that as well. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this YouTube channel as well. Check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com, and listen to our podcast, forgenarrative.com. If you like watching hobby tutorials, we've got you covered. Check out Next Level Painting for all those fresh paint schemes, and head on back here for all sorts of hobby tutorials and techniques.